Hey guys, welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's Amazing Space Colony Simulator Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy and we have been on the LV426 now, a collection of uh, several rocks and asteroids. And as you can see, the newest update has brought us more that we have been surviving in for about 550 uh, cycles uh, now. My main aim is to try and get over here and start working with uh, some of the radioactive waste. And this, of course, means that we need to get the rocket up and running. Last time we made ourselves a little steam box here. Steam box that I have since noticed has no top temperature automation so this thing could totally melt itself I don't think it's ever actually going to get around to doing that but I do need to be a little bit aware of that I can I can change things around here to work my main focus for today is going to be trying to outfit the interior of this rocket and send a, a small excursion a colonization crew if you will over to Cherubi to try and start taking over things like the aluminium volcanoes we've got a couple of gold volcanoes over here but 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 a small problem has been brought to my attention a few episodes ago I did something that I don't do very often I messed with the timelines I went back in time I loaded up an old save and I saved some slicks that unfortunately had passed because the temperature got out of range for them and oh, there was all sorts of problems I think a few of them got caught over here Something similar has happened. I don't know what it is. I have no idea what has happened, but a whole bunch of slicks have died. Unfortunately, it happened a long time ago. I don't know when. There has been some major problems kicking off because of it. The uh, carbon dioxide is uh, starting to tip over into our base. This is pushing the natural gas up, which means none of it can be sorted out. Uh, I feel like the way that we're going to have to deal with this now is, of course, going to have to be a uh, industrial one. So I'm going to go ahead and put a carbon skimmer here with a pneumatic door, just so we can separate these two rooms out but indeed not have them entirely devoid from each other divorced from each other wow words there are a few problems like this car uh, carbon skimmer here it does have an overheat temperature and over here the obsidian and stuff is indeed too hot for it uh, so we we'll, might have to see if we can't seal it into its own little room do something special with it try and cool it down we've got a cooling loop going on over here and really and really all we need to do is rip out all the hot uh, the hot materials and insulate and it will become the same temperature as this area over here so I need to sort out this issue we've definitely got a bit of a problem here I'm gonna deconstruct this I believe that I have started building a liquid sensor over here I have uh, output this to the oil well with a knock gate the moment I noticed it, I was like, ah, oh, throw that in place. Oh wait, people probably want to see me doing that. But here it is. This is currently in place. I'm going to take this ladder out. I feel like it's just non-essential. Uh, if it detects uh, crude oil, uh, stop, stop pumping. Just stop pumping. Of course, now this means we just need to wait for all of this to drain out. We need to wait for our uh, plastic production to eat enough of the crude oil to bring us back down to a good level. I'm going to need to sweep out some of this. There appears to be an awful lot of water in this area. I assume some steam has uh, escaped or maybe some water has trickled in. Either of these would have led to this particular issue. And obviously with this cooling system in place that we have, oh, it's, it's nice, it's orange, it's good. Orange uh, is not steam. That, that's that's the main thing to take away from that steam will not form in orange areas uh, so water has been crashing out of the system and we've been very nicely is he putting what, what, what did he just put in there crude oil okay crude crude oil uh, the water has been uh, crashing out and we've just been sweeping it up wherever we can temperature encroachment is going to be an issue here though ah uh, pneumatic doors also overheat I keep forgetting about this. Okay, we're going to have to rip this down and wait for the area to cool down a little bit more. I've uh, realized we've got a bit of a cyclical problem down here. I was going to start clearing out some of this carbon dioxide uh, so that we could make the temperature a little bit lower. Uh, for that to happen, we need to get rid of some of the crude oil. But for some of the crude oil, crude oil to uh, disappear, we need to turn it into petroleum and petrol. But guess what they both output? That's right, carbon dioxide, which needs to be got rid of by the carbon scrap. You see, we've got a bit of a cyclical issue here. So I've gone ahead and set up another situation up the top here that hopefully is going to start eating a bit of the uh, the carbon dioxide that we have available to us uh, the reason that I need to do it up here rather than down below it's a temperature one it's very much a temperature one so we're just waiting for people to come along and uh, connect up this horrific series of bridges that I've connected together to make this work and hopefully it will be all good I'm just gonna <clears throat> mildly encourage them Okay, water input, polluted water output. This, of course, is going up to our sieve up here. That should clean it all out. And we'll get some extra water out of this. So that's pretty cool. Uh, another thing that I'm going to want to do, if we can, is try and attach a vent to this. Let's just run this 
out to the side here and hopefully this will output all the carbon dioxide that is coming from these two machines here that's not the line i wanted this is the line i wanted so that should hopefully get things kick started and turning over again we've got a little bit of automation going in up top we uh researched these smart batteries last episode and didn't didn't get around to using them so let's do that Okay, with that gas vent in place, the natural gas generators hooked back up and the polymer press is running already. I thought we might have to wait a little bit for this to empty out a bit. No, no, we're, we're just straight up. That problem solved. All of our problems have been solved. Would have been nice to keep some slicks though. Over on the other side of the map, I have set up this kind of casual exploration pathway over here. I'm hoping we can find some slicksters down here. We've got this molten one, but I'm hoping we can find some of the purple ones as well. But this is not what we wanted to do for the entirety of the episode. No, I wanted to come over to the Virgo here because I've put up a few things to get built. You can see we've got a couple of cots, we've got the toileting facilities up there, and we've got oxygen being made. We need somewhere... Uh, let's, let's do that now. We need somewhere for people to sit and eat. Bam, bam. All right, good. That's good. Uh, Duplicate operation required. I, I think you'll find there are plenty of duplicates out here. And with the interiors coming together, we need to start thinking about the things we're going to load into the cargo base. Well, I can tell you for definite the manufactured materials, I'm definitely going to want to have some glass, some plastic, and some steel. The problem that we've got with the glass, though, is you might notice we've got an awful lot of solar panels here. This means all the glass that we had that was around the uh, the POIs that generated naturally with the base has now been exhausted. Maybe there's a little bit here, but it's mostly been exhausted. So we're going to have to come down here and build ourselves something from the refinement. Of course, it is the glass forge. The problem with the glass forge uh let's put it underneath this one here is that it pr produces very hot materials like very hot materials so we need to try and be able to cool these materials down we could just do it with a little bit of water over here and then try and cool down the we could do i was going to build a whole aqua tuner set up over here but I, th I think that might actually work of course this is all planning for when we land down on Cherubi over here i want some glass so we can build some solar panels get ourselves a power setup going put ourselves a, uh, a a base over here i think maybe we'll have somewhere sleeping but more importantly then we can get access to this aluminium volcano and that's why i want the uh, the steel so we can put down a, ch a chilling unit up here ah it's going to be great i'm not even sure what temperature things come out of here at it, i don't i don't even know Ooh. Oh, that is very, very hot. I don't I don't know if we can... Well, anyway, my plan is just to fill the area up with water, and then when it erupts, all the temperature will be dumped into that water. We'll use the uh, the steam machines, the steam turbines, to try and st cool that down to 120 degrees, something like that, uh, and then get the materials out there and cool them down further through just ambient uh, radiation. I might remember a little while ago we had a problem of some polluted uh, sorry some food poisoning in our polluted water and this meant that we had to bring everything up to about 40 degrees uh unfortunately i forgot about this and it ended up warming up to about 70 or so until the uh, liquid pump over here started taking damage well now now enough of the temperature has dissipated away being cooled by the cool slush geyser that's coming out so i'm going to rip down two of these tiles and actually finally repair this liquid pump been been some time i'm sure only of the long view uh, only you long-term viewers will notice this but i, I just i want to let you know that i'm fixing it finally okay the glass forge let's get the power line running down here i hope that i've got the access way to do this yeah this this looks like she'll all be built so this put puts out liquid glass liquid glass that's a little bit of a, a thing to deal with you know what so much of a thing i'm gonna come over here to our ceramic and uh, make ourselves sorry to our kiln and make ourselves some ceramic one of the best insulators available to us in the game at the moment i believe i might i might be a little bit wrong there i've not gone through and done all the comparisons we're not making with ceramic anymore or will when i make my first bit of ceramic it will suddenly appear that that might be the case Hmm, it's getting hot down here. We might need to make a cooling solution anyway. I might do something like that over here and then... Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to run the gas pipes through here. That that would be a, a, a better idea. Uh, I wanted to use a gas in the thermal regulator over here. I, I think that's it's something we don't use very often and I think it's something that we can deal with. Using something like hydrogen would uh, be quite a good... Uh, good medium to be used. And it's not like we don't have a supply of hydrogen over here. It's not as much as I would like. As you can see, the fact that we are not using as much oxygen means we're not producing as much hydrogen. And most of the hydrogen is being just burnt off here. But we could uh, send the flow down this way to charge the cooling loop. Yeah, I might. I might. Let's let's see if I can do something like that. Okay, well, we're gonna open up these tiles again. I'm gonna put down an insulated set of tiles on this side. I have no idea where I put down local materials or not, but I, th I think this one we can wait for. 
thermo regulator, and then let's start thinking about how the lights. I don't, I don't really use gas for this that often. This is going to be interesting. That's an in. This is an out. Okay. I mean, is this even going to be able to handle it? I, I'm not entirely sure, but we're going we're to see. We're going to find out. Yeah, that's that's some pipage, right? So I've just gone through all the gases that I've got access to, and I've got to say, hydrogen is the only one that's actually worth it in even the slightest amount. It's only got a thermal conductivity of 0 0.168, which is it's tiny. It, it, that's that. It's so small. Uh, but it's got a specific heat capacity of 2.4, uh, so it takes like two units of energy to change a degree for every gram that is there. That's that's how that is to be read. Another one that we can chill almost indefinitely is oxygen. But look, one that's half the number, and like that's that's like. Uh, Oh man, this this is less than a tenth of the no no this is a twentieth of the number. It, it's tiny. It, it's it's really tiny. No, two tenths, not a twentieth. Why is why is wrong with that? We've got access to carbon dioxide, also terrible, but also turns into a liquid quite easily. Same with chlorine. So it looks like we're definitely gonna have to put hydrogen into these pipes. In the meantime, we have some ceramic here. Okay, let's have a look at our uh, plumbing and insulated pipes. Yes, yeah, ceramic suddenly uh, appeared on the end here. This is great insulator. Uh, retains heat because the energy transfers slowly through the materials with low thermal conductivity. 0 0.62 watts per degree of Kelvin difference. Okay, I mean, that's still better than oxygen. That's, that's crazy. But it's what we're going to be using. We're going to take this ceramic and we're going to take it out of the side here. Now, am I going to do any more than just dump it on the floor here? I don't know. I was going to think about dropping it in some water. We've got radiant gas pipes to keep it cool. Should we try it? I think we'll try it. Let's uh, deconstruct this. So once the pipes come over, I'm going to give it a steel output vent. I still don't know whether this is going to be good enough. The thing with liquids that come out of uh, vents in oxygen not included is they will drop all the way to the bottom before they start thinking about interacting with everything. So it can travel all this distance without warming up until it hits the bottom where it will uh, interact with the water, flash to steam, maybe. Who knows? Am I going to have to put a door on this? I might have to put a door on this. Oh, Hicks and Bishop got atmosphere suits on. Hold, hold up, hold, hold up. What? Oh, uh, all right. I, yes, I said I, because I put this hole in the wall here. What they've done is they've come down this way, picked up the suits, come down, and uh, not had to face the cons. Uh, well, actually, now, now we can put these back. Ah, oh, it's mildly annoying. Even though we have some power coming through here, it's only 200 joules, so it's not that much. Uh, we got, we lose all the power coming through to this little mini grid over here. We can't get this smart battery charged. We can't get the thermoregulator turning over. It's a little bit annoying, if I am to be honest with you. I also want to copy this out and see if we can't connect those together. Let's get this going in a loop. It's not going to go in a loop, is it? Okay, okay, we're very nearly full. I'm going to copy out this bridge up here, and then I'm going to destroy this gas pipe here. See if we can't get it circulating. Uh, the problem at the moment, of course, is where the gas turbine is not turning over. We aren't getting it passed through. So I've tried to make a little bit of a system that passes it up and over and keeps the flow running. Just got to wait for someone to come down and build it. Oh, and of course, with the no power, uh, I'm going to see if we can't get someone on the generator to get the power back up and running. That, that might... It's not a long-term solution, is it? But it'll, it'll do to start with. Okay, taking that pipe out definitely did the job here. That's good. Let's run that in there and see if that does also the same thing. Okay, with Cal on the generator, we seem to be getting the battery being charged. That's cool. I'm not sure if anything is coming through the power uh, transformer here. No, not a single drop is coming from the power transformer. Uh, down here, we have got some water starting to get up to temperature while the polluter... Ooh, there it goes. There it goes. All right, we've made some steam here. This is going to take a long time to actually get up to... Uh, I think it's 125 it needs to be before it starts turning over. Uh, but that's fine. When it turns over, it'll make us a little bit of heat and we can uh, make ourselves... Oh, look at this. Some nice cold hydrogen. What, what are we down to now? 25. We're coming in at 39. All right, this, this is cool. I might want to get rid of this bridge here, just in case when it swaps back and forth between the two, there's a difference in the uh, the gas volume, uh, and it ends up freezing up. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't want that to happen at all, and we're about to find out if it does actually happen. Okay, that's turned off. Any Look at that gap there. That's going to be a problem. I really need this one to get destroyed, like, right now. Okay, we've got the alarms ringing. The gap has made it its way about a quarter of our way around the track. We need to get rid of this uh, gas pipe over here, this bridge that is coming on. Bishop has is, is made his way down there. Beautiful, beautiful. We didn't even make it halfway around the track. Well, I, mean, I suppose halfway is going to be about here because we're snaking back and forth somewhere. But hopefully, as soon as this gets done, pop, pop, any moment, pop. All right, cool. We're, we're all safe for the night. We're all safe. 
I think we'll just reconnect this and let all this gas drain down. I was going to keep it in case we wanted to expand the system, but no, we'll, we'll just keep the pipe. That'll be fine. Okay, we've got Jonesy down trying to keep the power again. I don't know how hot this is going to get over here. We might need to actually put a little bit of a uh, radiant pipe over this side just to try and keep the actual machine cool itself. If we do that, do you think that will work? I don't know. We'll, we'll do it and see what happens. But I think it is time. Time for what this little segment has been all about. We're going to do just one blob of glass first. See what happens here. We'll turn it up just to see if we can get someone. Oh, that's not quick enough. Go on, Hicks. Yeah, nice. Okay, here he comes for the delivery. Uh, do we have to encourage someone to do the next one? Bishop. Bishop is coming from... Oh, just up there. All right, that, that's cool. That's cool. Very interested to see what happens here. So, little, little yellow bar goes across the bottom. Uh, and that's oxygen, not the glass forge. The glass forge is turning sand, 30 degree sand, which wasn't cold in the first place. But you know what? We're going to have to heat it up to a much higher temperature. There it goes. Okay, they seem to be uh, going okay. None of the gas pipes, uh, not the gas pipes, sorry, the uh, liquid pipes broke. Okay, and th there, there it is. Look at this. Did we flash any of the water to steam? No, we did stick about 10 degrees in it, though. That's that's okay. We've got ourselves... Ooh, look, 700 degree glass when I clicked on it. It's, it's going down all the time, but the water is just soaking up that temperature. Okay, this is good. This is really... I like the system. I like this system a lot. I'm not sure how sustainable it would be if we put together, I don't know, let's say 20... Little, little stress test. Let's see what happens. I, I predict that we're going to have steam. I mean, this is why I put this little lip here, so that we can push the water in. I mean, what's probably going to happen is we're going to end up mopping up water that has condensed on the radiant pipes around here. Okay, one got done without me noticing. That's a little bit of a shame here, but I think we're going to do okay. The temperature is climbing, but not that much. I'm wondering whether the hydrogen can do it. Is this where it gets hot? No, it gets hot coming through most of this place, but that's no problem. It's all like the metal refinery is slowly being cooled down. The kiln is being cooled down. As we start to just bring everything down in temperature, these spikes that come from the production of stuff should hopefully make everything okay. Right, we're done producing the copper. That's that's good. I'm also waiting to watch the rest of this turn into steam. Okay, Ripley's here making another batch. I am, again, mildly terrified. We've already got 50 degree glass in there. It is losing its heat. Oh, here we go. It's coming down. It's adding on. Now, will the glass change its temperature? Was, was that nothing? What happened there? We've got some sort of weird bug where the glass is just adding on to the glass that's already there, and thus the temperature is staying as it is. It could very well be. It could very well be. Okay, here comes some more. We'll find out. Okay, so the volume of the glass is indeed going up, but I didn't really see the temperature go up all that much. I mean, to be fair, there's like four times the amount of water as there is glass here, so maybe it's all good. Maybe it's all good. Yeah, definitely seems to be going fine. No problem. 37.6. So we, we are definitely bringing the temperature of the hydrogen down just a little bit each cycle. Uh, that means eventually we're going to end up with frozen uh, ice in the in the water trough here. I'm interested to know what happens when the glass falls on top of the ice, but this that, that's going to be a long time coming. I'm probably going to mention it randomly during another episode, so I'm going to do something I don't normally do. Subscribe to see that. <laughs> Okay, one last thing before we're completely done. Over here, I'm going to put a gas pipe thermo sensor just to get the temperature of the incoming gas. Now, this is a much further away than I normally would like to do it, but I've uh, kind of packed everything in quite close here. I could have brought the, uh, the pipe up over and one. I was really tempted to do that, but no, we're, we're going to do it this way instead. Because, you know, I like wasting my copper on extraordinarily long automation lines. Yeah. I definitely feel like this has somehow circumvented the whole, like, having to deal with the temperature issue. I'm, I'm kind of okay with it, but uh, I feel I feel like this whole system has been for naught. I could have just dropped it in one place. Okay, let's keep it above minus 20 for now. Let's see what that does. I really want to see that ice. Ten cycles it took us to set most of that up. I went back, I checked. We started at 5.54. We are now 5.64. And what has happened in this time? We've had things break. I know exactly what has happened here. The liquid tepidizer does some weird things when the power shuts off and shuts back on. It should only reach its target temperature of about 85 degrees. But look, it's gone up to 105. How is that even possible? Game bugs. That's how that's possible. Unfortunately, what's happened there is it's boiled all the water inside my uh, liquid... Water. I've started picking up the American water. 
water. I don't know where it's come from. I'm sorry. I'm going to correct myself a lot. Uh, so it's boiled all the water that we had in here, turning it all into steam. Uh, that's not great, actually. If I was to be honest with you, that's possibly the worst thing that could happen in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to have to dig our way through here. We're going to dump some crude oil. We're going to make ourselves a new liquid lock. I could come in this way, but uh, I would destroy all of that uh, power setup we've got over there. The thing that to actually take note of, though, is that we have all the steam we could possibly ever need up here. If we uh, come and have a look at this steam engine, it only takes 150 kilograms of steam, and that, that's that's less than one tile. Less than one tile. So we might might just actually leave this on a little bit of a back burner. Uh, I, I guess we're coming down here. Let's 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 put in a let's put in a preliminary route. It's a little bit dark. I can't quite see what I'm doing, but we're gonna go across the top here like so. And there we go, that, that should be able to get our people down and doing what we need to uh, enable us to set up a liquid lock. I'll probably fix this off camera if I'm to be honest with you. The thing that I mostly need to do, mostly need to do, is set up a knock gate in between these two. That, that, that's it, that's all that needs to happen. When this is high temperature, turn this off. And that should make it more robust. It should mean that it's not going over the target temperature. We're not, we're not relying on it to detect itself. This thing will also be turning it off. But for us to be able to go, there is another thing that we are missing from our manufactured materials that over course is the steel. Whilst we do have a bunch of steel here, uh, 339, if we come over to our power and click the steam turbine, you can see that we actually... Ooh. No, I might have been misremembering. The thing that I actually need, sorry, is not a steam turbine. It is the thermal aqua tuner. And if we have a look here, you can see that the steel that is needed, uh, 12, 1,200. I do not have 1,200 steel. Now, this is because I have made a, a grave oversight. You might notice that one of the things that we don't have on this, is uh, this island, this rock, uh, this asteroid, is poke shells. There's no, there's no way of uh, getting any lime here. If we come over to Tyrannu, we do actually have a small poke shell colony over here. Here we go. Here's one of them. Here's another one. There's just two of them, though. It's going to take a while to be able to, like, build a ranch for them, make everything nice, get enough going together, uh, get enough uh, ranching going together to actually build up their numbers. They they only drop, uh, drop poke shell once when they go from, far, from a baby to adult at five uh, age and want from... Sorry... And then once again, when they when they uh, when they die, they they also drop one. I think it's when they die, or when, at some point during their adult life, M meaning they drop two uh, shells, which is not. Uh no, it's alright, but we need we need more poke shells if we're gonna do anything about that. I have a way of getting around this, but first and foremost, what do you mean food? We're out of dirt. How are we out of dirt? You know what, we, re we we really are out of dirt. Okay. I mean we have plenty on we have plenty on your kill, so um I mean we know how to deal with this, right? It's not like we haven't done it in the past. Look, there it is. Go. This is a terrible way of dealing with it, but this is how we're going to deal with it. Filled the conveyor over with dirt. What's cool bringing over? Hey, how are you doing? You, you got stuff on you or not? No, you're you're even just going to go find it. Is this is this is where we keep all our dirt? Okay, wonders. But anyway, back on Toronto. Now that we've set this up to be fertilized, I was saying how we don't have poke shells to turn into lime, but I tell you what we do have over here. If I press F4 and hit mineral, look at all these bright orange bits down here. These are fossils. Now, uh, we also have to take note of the temperature. 156 degrees is not a low temperature. It's actually quite a high temperature. Look, we've still got some more over here. And fossil, we break down one of these tiles into fossil into lime. So I think, I think as much as I have gone ahead and made a uh, as much as I've made a set of build orders for the duplicates to carry out over on Yakil, I, I always forget which one's Tyranno and which one's Yakil. I always feel like this one's Yakil, but no, it's not. Anyway, we're going to set up a little bit of a set of dig orders here. We're going through the Abyss Light. We are most definitely going through the Abyss Light. And then we can just dig all of this out, meaning we will be very, very fossil rich by the end of this if, if actually it gets done over the top of every, all the other jobs. Also, enough of the oil has been drained out of here that this gas pump can now start moving the natural gas up to be burnt off. That's going to be a very good and welcome change. Hopefully, I mean, this is still uh, disabled by the automation grid. It is this one that is picking up. At some point, as this is open and we are still moving oil up into the plastic over here, I noticed that the... Uh, the refinery's not been turned over for a little bit, but that's no problem. Uh, so, yeah, uh, just wanted to say, look, it's all working fine now. Wait, 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 wait. How, how is this? What's happened here? Say, say what? We have, we have got some problems. We have got big problems. We are dropping water into our oil, and it's happening pretty regularly. This, this is terrible. I don't even know how this happened. 
was there like a, a natural tile under here or something? I'm not sure. I have no idea. I didn't put this build order down, so it's obviously something that's been hanging around for a while. Look at it. It's building up and it's terrible. Where, where are you guys? Come on. Uh, one thing I want to know, is it only here that's uh, red alert? Is, is anybody else? I, I don't know. I just don't know. Okay. Using the powers of panic has definitely helped out here. Okay, the digging has been dug and Randoms here is taking the fossil off to the teleport device. Let's uh, speed him up a little bit here so we can keep an eye on him. Uh, it's going to be pretty good. We, we need to take all of this over to the other rock. We're going from uh, Tirano to Yarkil. As soon as he gets through all these many checks that needs to happen on the way, of course, he needs to get rid of his heat uh, heat resistive gear and get through some doors. So coming over to Yarkil, what are we looking at over here? Up here somewhere? There we go. Here, here is it coming down, but is the fossil being turned into lime a super high priority is all right beautiful who's on it no pending deliveries i disagree yeah fossil to lime it's what it's like super 100 percent well jonesy's picking some of it up he's grabbed 176 kilos or was it just 76 kilos i didn't quite see and he's made a delivery here uh the reason it wasn't getting shipped straight away was because we needed a uh, hundred and we only had uh, well we had 70 it turns out we've got 700 now just waiting for people to come along and do the actual actual uh, turning over of the machine here there we go the ash is on it great oh yeah the rocks are like super hot aren't they they've just they've just come down from the very bottom of the one of the worlds anyway the lime is going to get picked up once it gets produced and jonesy here uh, who's moving at this a time it's going to start moving it down towards our metal refinery where everything else should be sat and ready waiting to go you can see the lime is the only thing we are missing so the iron to steel is being turned over who is actually going to be doing it though I mean, Bishop might get to it eventually. Turns out Hicks. Hicks was going to come along and turn our lime, coal, and steel, uh, iron into steel. Uh, it's going to take a little while to go down. I've also put up a little bit of a thermal regulator next to the thermal regulator. Um, it was getting very hot over here. As you can see, it is currently up to 50. I've asked this that when it is uh, 50 to turn off, uh, then an AND gate comes... Oh, press the right button. Then an AND gate comes into it. This just turns it on and off and lets the heat dissipate. The whole top layer of steam has turned... Uh, of water has turn to steam here we've got some uh, rather hot crude oil coming out of the metal refinery that's great that's exactly what we want what we could also do with is more lime being delivered to every time we get 10 kilos that's more more steel being made great i've been sat here wondering why the steel isn't being moved up to the rockets the last thing i want to show you in this process so i've decided that maybe maybe the ladder's too far away so we're going to give that a go perhaps the steam engine will melt it on the way past but we should be able to reach down from there right i, I don't know i actually don't know it doesn't have a uh, conveyor entrance if i come down here you can see that we are on the right overlay so it's not that oh i wonder if it's these Okay, we've got a conveyor receptacle and a conveyor loader. Let's try building these and see what happens. The bishop should be on the way any moment. Experimentation. It, it's right. No, I, don't, I mean, we're going we're gonna to get the drag clip. I don't, I don't really want any of those. Okay, it needs some power. I don't know whether we're going to need to put... So this is receptacle and this is loader. Let, let's just put down its um, equivalent next to it. Receptacle loader let's let's just try this and see what happens actually kind of no idea <laughs> okay with some power being supplied to this let's see if we can't put in some industrial ingredients no not industrial ingredients man manufactured materials glass and steel probably a little bit of plastic as well oh really cool 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 Re really this is very important that you don't do that oh my gosh how many uses does this have left now it, it's actually been used quite a lot. Look at this. Okay, let's just turn that up, shall we? We, we need this cleaning quite often. <laughs> okay, we've got a whole line of people going to do stuff. Disinfect. No, but we got some steel. We got some plastic. We've got two loads of plastic. Okay, that might be a little bit too much plastic. I'm definitely more after the steel and the glass. We do need some plastic to take with us. But more importantly, I am just super curious as to how this works. Okay, we've got people going inside. Let's keep an eye on this. So things are going to go in, but we haven't built the power yet. Okay, that's that's something that needs to be going. Go, Hicks, go. Hopefully he's going to get all of these side lines up here. Okay, does this now... It's saying no power. Oh, really? Okay, now we've got power. Yes, it's going in there. We're getting some stuff... Uh, pl lots of plastic in there. That's kind of not what we want. But more importantly, but more importantly, now that we come to the outside, yes, this is how we store stuff in here. All right, great. O obviously. Why, why would I not have known that? You know what I don't like? 
polluted oxygen off gassing from the radiant uh, from the polluted water down here thankfully so far it seems to keep being destroyed when the liquid falls out of the liquid vent on top of it uh, and turns to steam if we notice that the only time there it disappears is when it's underneath this uh, this steam pipe i hope that uh, this liquid pipe i hope that's going to carry on happening i really wouldn't like to have some a permanent little uh, colony of polluted oxygen in there that'd be horrible okay the only thing i seem to be missing now is a place for food i am a uh, totally not able to put a uh, refrigerator in here so we're just going to go ahead and put some more conveyor loaders down why do i keep pressing v instead of b that's really not helpful uh, and a single convert block of conveyor rail back there we're going to need some power of course we'll bring it up from here probably the worst way i could have done it but we're going to do it like that anyway Okay, so the muckroo weren't working out here. They was all taking dirt. We didn't have much dirt to give, or if we did, then people weren't sending it across through the teleport device over here. I was sending through uh, some on the panic. I've also been sending food through for about 10 or 15 days now whilst we're waiting for these bristle blossoms to be sending up. But this has been a bigger problem than you would imagine. I was just like, three people, no worries. We'll just send food over from your kill, right? Look how little food we've got there. And a lot of this is muckroo that has just come out of the printing pod. Like, this this is this has been a very stressful couple of hours but we're, we've been running out of time so I, I decided to kind of skim all over that because uh, basically I've solved it with the application of two set uh, two incubators here so we can start building up our uh, hatchlings again uh, I've been getting a little bit of barbecue but more importantly more importantly this uh, cool slush geyser has erup uh, erupted into life again and we're getting a serious supply of polluted water which is bringing our bog jellies bog buckets that's what they're called back online i should probably say that we've used bristle blossom because all they require is some light and some water so yeah i mean no no need to constantly feed it with some fertilization over here literally just keep it within body temperature making sure it's got the right temp uh, right pressure not too much radiation uh and a bit of water yeah great water it's taken a few cycles but i feel like we're now food secure as you can see we've got 70,000 calories over this side and tyranno just keeps on building up 45,000 calories but they're just building so many uh roast grub fruit nuts and uh, mostly gristle berries in the refrigerator over here that i feel like i feel like we're stable we could possibly send off people to another planet but who are we gonna send off yes he has been waiting for a very long time the man the myth the legend it's time to defrost our friend i think there can only be one one person sat inside this tank. Yes, it is, of course, the Sir Doctor, the Captain Subs, Esquire Jr. the third. As soon as someone actually comes along and opens this. Okay, first thing in the morning, Random Randomers has woken up. This is a bit of a gamble. It's a max. That's all right. We're fine with that. Uh, Cry Tank, 3,000 years have been uncovered, uh, waiting for this guy to be thawed out. Uh, fills both duplicates with a sense of hope, something they will desperately need to keep their morale up whilst facing the dangers ahead. Uh, okay, ho ho hold up that cold. Oh, oh, it's it's got to be Sir Doctor Captain Subs Esquire the second because we can't we can't fit any more digits in there. Ah, oh, that's 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 really disappointing. But there we go. We, he is in. He is in. Oh, welcome. This uh, this is a bit of a gamble. I have no idea what skills he's got. He is an early bird. He's been motivated by his friends. Let's go over and have a look at his bio. Uh, building, digging, and researching. What? I said this was a gamble. This is amazing. Age, 2,232 cycles. Uh, small bladder, early bird, ugly crier, and balloon artist. Someone agrees. Oh, these skills are pretty good. It's wi widespread, but it's good. It's good. Let's come up to his skills over here. Uh, let's have a look. Sir Dr. Captain Sub Subs Esquire the third. Oh, look at this yeah look at all this love for the good thing this is this is the, this is almost the perfect setup for sending someone to another planet okay oh he's got seven morale we're gonna we're gonna give him these first two. are we not allowed we're we not allowed no no skill points of course he's got no skill points he's brand new oh. okay so teleport device sir doctor uh, doctor captain subs esquire the second could you please get into that that little pod there right we're gonna send you away uh and i think we need to send you with some backup we have built built two spaces inside that uh that rocket there and we're definitely gonna go ahead and uh, use them all right here we go we have arrived nice nice nice. it'd be nice to give you a couple of a couple of little cycles to go around and level up a bit but no i i think I think maybe uh, definitely a well-rounded enough character to go off and do it. Right, we're going to have Hicks and we're going to have Dr. Captain Sub Esquire the second. Whew. Oh, also, also, we, we've got one more thing to do. Okay, I've gone through and I've ticked all the different foods that these guys can have. Let's, let's just get them packed in there. 
Okay, we have packed this thing full of 10, 11, 18, 20, let's call it 23 days worth of food. Of course, it's going to be for two duplicates, but that's pretty good. Let's get on out of here. Another thing we need to do, of course, is provide some fuel for this. So I'm going to throw this switch here. This is going to turn the gas pump on. As you can see, it is pumping out beautiful, beautiful steam into this well-insulated pipe. The steam is coming out at 230 degrees. Oh, that's really hot. Too much further and the steel would have actually started to uh, to melt 275. Good, jo good job this broke when it did, if to be honest with you. Good job it broke when it did. Okay, if these are all 50 uh, 500 grams. How long do we have to go for 150 grams? Let's 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 see that. Let's see about what we've got. Nah, we've not even hit 20 kilograms. All right, let it run for longer. <laughs> not only have we packed this place with food, but I also remembered to put some dirt in here so we could re refill the toilet. There's also some algae on the floor so we can keep the oxygen turning. So everything seems to be set and ready to go. If we come over to here, change our crew. No, we want to set it to crew only. We want to change our destination all the way over to Sharubi. And of course, that means that all we need to do is hit the begin launch sequence. But with that, I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys next time. We're going to launch this off there. We're going to build them a better base. We're going to get a uh, cap on top of those aluminium volcanoes. And we're going to cruise our way into the future. But I'll see you then when we're going to do that. Bye. Where are the crew? Here they are. Here they are. Bye.